Okay, everybody, as you can see, if you've clicked on this video, you're on the Keystone Practice Test, Module 2. And we're going to do questions number 1 and 2 in this video. So let's take a look at question number 1. Donna sold her handmade crafts for four days at a craft fair. Her daily sales are shown in the table. So you can see on the first day, she made $378. On the second day, she made $303. On the third day, she made $228. And on day four, she made $153. The question was, Donna's daily sales follow a pattern. Which expression can be used to predict her sales on any day? Let's call it day N. So really, we want to be able to extend this table, if you think about it, and find her sales on any generic day, day N. What are the sales? So what we want to do is write an equation to model this data. Now, this table is interesting because it's moving left to right. It's a horizontal table, and we're used to our tables being vertical. If you were to make this table vertical, it would look something like this. I'll come down here. So your days might be here as the X, and your money that Donna made would be the Y. So we'll call this Y. So maybe on the first day, she made $378. On the second day, $303, etc. Third day, $228. And on the fourth day, $153. And we're looking for some kind of an equation that will give us the nth day's earnings. Okay, so I'm actually splitting this into three different ways your brain may have taken you on this question. The first way is whenever I'm given a table, I like to pick two ordered pairs off of that table and write the equation y equals mx plus b. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start with just quite simply the first two points. So I'm going to take the point 1, comma, 378, and the second point 2, comma, 303. And I'm going to go ahead and write the equation of the line through these two points. So that's going to look like this. I'm going to start with my slope. And I know to find slope, I'm going to take 303 minus 378 all over 2 minus 1. Now, if you think back to your classwork, that's going to be your y sub 2 minus your y sub 1 divided by your x sub 2 minus your x sub 1. And that would be if I'm giving my coordinates x, y, x, y, first set, second set. Okay. So if I do this math, if I take 303, you can hear my pitter-patter over here, minus 378, I end up getting that my slope is negative 75 over 2 minus 1 is 1. So my slope is going to be negative 75. Now I'm going to take that slope and I'm going to insert it into my linear equation y equals mx plus b. You worked with that a lot in Algebra 1. I'm going to go ahead and put negative 75 in for m. It's going to look like this. Now my final step is to figure out what b is. And in order to do that, I can take either one of these ordered pairs that I chose up here, and I can insert them for x and y. So I typically use the first set. So my y value in this set is 378. My x value is 1, and I'm going to go ahead and solve for b. So doing the math here, I have 378 equals negative 75 plus b. And to solve for b, I'm just going to add 75 to both sides. It's going to cancel these out and give me b equals 378 plus 75 is 453. So my final equation, putting it all together using a slope of negative 75 and a b of 453, this is going to give me y equals negative 75x plus 
453. Now I look at this equation and I look up here at my answer choices and I notice that three of them start with 453. So my brain immediately goes to, okay, let's rearrange the furniture here. Let me rewrite this equation with the 453 first, which is very odd because we didn't, at least in my class, we never really did that. Y equals, this is going to be 453 minus 75X. 453 minus 75X. This looks like answer B to me. Now, they don't have an X, they have an N, but let's not forget, that's what we were going with here on the nth day, how much money would Donna have made? So if I just replace this X with an N, I'm going to have this equation right here. So I'm going to go with letter B, and this is the first way I did the problem. Now, I can do this a second way using my TI-84. So let me pull this TI-84 out here and remind you of some things you would have learned in class about the TI-84. If you press the STAT key, now STAT is situated right here. If you press STAT and you want to enter some data, we're going to edit. So edit's already selected, number one, I'm just going to hit enter. Now I have some old data in here and you probably do too. So to clear that data, you're going to arrow up to L1 and highlight it and then you're going to hit the clear button and enter. And that's going to clear out your list. What you do not want to do is hit delete. If you accidentally hit delete, it's going to delete the entire list. If this would happen to you during testing, here's how you fix it. So let's just say I hit delete. Notice L1 just completely disappeared. Oh no, I want to put it back. All you do to put it back is insert L1. So you see this little INS above the delete button, that stands for insert, it's blue. So I'm going to press second insert. Now I have another column and I want to insert L1, which if you look above the number one key, there's an L1 sitting above there in blue, so I'm going to hit second L1, enter. And now it's back. So just food for thought if you would accidentally delete that during testing. Okay, L1 represents my X's, or in this case my N's, number of days. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that data. I had one day, two days, three days, four days. This is straight off my table. I'm going to arrow to the right, and that's going to bring me to my Y list, or my money in my table. And those values were 378, the scooch here, 303, 228, and 153. The TI-84 will actually write the equation for me if I hit the right commands. So once you have your points in from your table, you're going to press STAT again. But this time we're not going to edit. We actually want to calculate something. So we're going to arrow over to the right and we're going to come down and choose number four, Lin Reg. Now this is AX plus B, which is the same as MX plus B. It's just the TI-84 uses A for the slope instead of M glory. Okay, we're going to hit enter. Are our X's in list 1? Yes. Are our Y's in list 2? Yes. So we're going to arrow down to calculate. And there it is. Now notice, they start with Y equals AX plus B. They're telling me that A is negative 75 and B is 453. And that is going to equate exactly with my equation that I wrote when I did it by hand in part 1. Okay, so method one, write the equation by hand. Method two, use the TI-84. Now here's method three. This I would call a test taking strategy when your test is multiple choice. Say you don't want to do any of this or you forget how to do this. What you can do is look at your answers and kind of bounce off your answers. Let me show you how. If you look at answer choice B, if you take that answer and where the N is, you insert 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you get out 378, 303, 228, and 153, you know your answer is right. So let me show you what I mean. If I take at letter B, and I press in 453 minus 75 times 1, guess what? 
I get 378. If I take my calculator and press in 453 minus 75 times 2, bingo, I get 303. If I put 453 minus 75 times 3 days, I get 228. And finally, 453 minus 75 times day 4, I get 153. So, that's kind of an easier way to do it, testing your answers, than going through all of this work. When the test is multiple choice, you can certainly use this as an option. So hopefully this explanation gives you at least one way you understand to find out that the answer to this question is letter B. Okay, let's go on to question two. Question two. This question said, the graph shows the descent of an elevator in a building. The slope of the line is negative 8. I highlighted that. So the slope of this line right here is negative 8. And this is happening between 13 and 19 seconds. The question is, how far did the elevator descend or go down in the time that's indicated by the two mark points on the graph? So really, guys, this is what we're looking for right, now, right here. How far did the elevator descend over this six second period from 13 to 19 seconds? So here's how I started the problem. I figured, okay, they're talking about slope of the line. Why no slope? The slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So I started there. Then I came over to my graph and I labeled the order pairs that go with these two giant dots. Think about it. This dot has an x value of 13, but we don't know the y value. So I called it y sub 1, some y value. For this giant dot, we know the x value is 19, but we don't know the y value. So I called that y sub 2, all the while thinking about this formula. Now, if I fill things in, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to have y sub 2, which I don't know, so I'm going to leave that y sub 2 minus y sub 1, which I don't know, so I'm going to leave it. I do know my x is. x sub 2 is 19, and x sub 1 is 13. And this is going to equal my slope from up above negative 8. See, I'm pulling that down here, negative 8. Now, if I do a little more math here, I'm going to get y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over 6, because 19 minus 13 is 6, equals negative 8. Now when solving an equation where I have this denominator of 6, to get rid of it, I can multiply both sides by 6, which is going to cancel these out, leaving me with y sub 2 minus y sub 1 equals negative 48. And believe it or not, my answer is right here. The difference between my y values on this graph, which is what I was looking for, is 48 units, feet, sorry, 48 feet. So the negative just tells me I'm coming down 48 feet during this six second period. So down 48 feet, over the six second period. It's like my rise and my run. So my answer for number two is 48 feet. That's how far the elevator descended during the six second interval. Okay, that's numbers one and two. Watch the next video for numbers three and four.